17 days ago. I'll probably do one of these every two weeks, about that, two to three, just so you can see how I flip to different games constantly and stuff. I gotta get back into Link's Awakening, I'm towards the end, and on Luigi's Mansion, but right now, I got three uh, Xbox One games that I've been playing. It's an early morning vid too. I'll hopefully have this up by 9.30. I did not get a video up yesterday, so. First game is uh, Assassin's Creed Chronicles. This one's cool. Um, it's 2D. It's all three games in one. Russia, China, and India <clears throat> use these three characters here. I had first played a little bit of the India one um, when I uh, had Game Pass at one point and Gold Ultimate or whatever. And I was on there, I was like, this is pretty cool. Um, so I ended up throwing it on my wish list, and uh, Thomas was nice enough to get it. It's really cool. It's 2D. These games are 2D. I mean, you kind of go back and forth in certain parts from, like, you go to kind of the back of the environment and come back to the front. But you're stealthing around, killing people, trying to be silent, avoiding guards. Some of the games have uh, dogs you got to avoid that make noise or parrots will make noise and stuff like that. You use a gun in the Russia one, which is a, a different change of pace. I mean, you've used guns before. You know, like Black Flag and 3, but... This one, uh, the, I can't remember the other ones, but it takes place. This one takes place, I believe, in like... 1918, maybe like right after, or towards the end of, I guess, World War One, maybe. Um, but it's cool, they all have, you know, special kind things they do and stuff, and in this the China one, uh, she's actually trained by Ezio, which is kind of cool, so that one takes would have taken place a while back, but Ezio is old, so still a while back, but I forget when those ones take place. Um, but yeah, the combat's pretty fun, you, you will go down pretty quickly in these games, if you're seeing and you and you don't and you're not killing people quick, especially this one because they have guns, so <laughs> they're killing you even faster. You know you can jump jump into shadows and stuff, and then run from from cover to cover or, or shadows to shadows. Uh, I'm sorry, you can hide bodies. There's different ways to distract enemies and stuff. Um, it's a really cool game. It has a cool look too to it as well. All three of the games just have like a kind of cool, just I don't know, it almost it looks like you're playing like a, I don't want to say a painting, but like a, uh, what were those things called that you'd make in school? Like a diorama, kind of maybe, I don't know. Really cool game though, I need to continue to play this one because I've kind of put off the first two a little bit for the third game, but uh. Definitely cool stuff. If you're into Assassin's Creed, get it because it's a change of pace while still feeling like Assassin's Creed. Uh, the next one is Battlefield 1. I picked this up because it was like, ended up being 7 and change on Amazon. I got another cheap game coming uh, next week and I might pick up Skyrim again for the Xbox One. It's down to like 15 bucks. <laughs> Or it's on sale for 15 so I threw it on my Amazon wish list because I'll just throw stuff on that thing and then I'll just buy them. But I like to keep them in one spot. So I may pick that up later today, actually. Because, you know what, mainly, I love Skyrim. But I never played the DLC, so it has all the DLC on it. It's supposed to look better, too, but how much better, I don't know. But anyway, uh, Battlefield 1. This is a really cool game. 
game I played this, I mainly got this because I wanted to play the single player. I'm not going to play multiplayer. I can't know anyway because I don't have gold or anything. Um, but the single player is uh, really cool. It's super intense. You don't see a lot of World War One shooters, so you have a lot of you know, technology is completely different from like World War Two. You know, they do a good job of making it feel like you're in the big multiplayer kind of arenas. You know, there's a lot going on. You got people with you, fighting with you. Stuff's happening everywhere. You use a plane in the, uh, one level with the one guy, which is fun as hell. You're taking down big blimps. You're dog fighting. You know, you're bombing stuff. It's really cool. You're using, you know, the old aircraft. really good. Uh, it's intense. You use different characters in each one. Um, I think the guy with the plane one, oh, I can't remember his name. Clyde Blackburn, maybe. Uh, Frederick Bishop, I'm using an Australian. I'm using in what I'm doing now, the level I'm doing now. Well, the story, they're called War Stories, the war story I'm doing now. Um, Daniel Edwards, I believe the first guy was. British guy, the Clyde Blackburn's American, and uh, are, the only, are those the only three I've done? There's one where you fight with Lawrence of Arabia as well, and uh, this guy is in the beginning, because you do a beginning mission where you're pretty much just dying, like that's the point, you keep dying, it brings up their like, you know, rest in peace or whatever, it tells you the years they were alive for, but the point is you just end up dying and showing you how messed up the war and whatever. But there's another mission with the uh, Harlem Hellfighters, which I believe this guy's part of. I haven't done that one yet, unless that was the first one that I did. I don't know. But said I didn't do it, so I would guess not. I don't know. Um, but it's cool, because you get all different perspectives and stuff. Oh, and the guy, uh, Lucas Mateo, I believe, in, in the Alps, you're doing that one where you're wearing body armor and stuff. It's really cool. It's intense. It looks great. I'm having a lot of fun with it, to be honest with you. And, and, uh, it's cool going back into using, you know, because a lot of people are used to using the World War II weapons, and then you had to, <clears throat> you got to do all the advanced warfare, modern warfare stuff. And this one, you still have similar weapons to World War II, but you get a lot of different ones as well. And, you know, kind of because they were experimenting with all types of different warfare and stuff in World War One, you get a lot of crazy shit. You know, you used to Mark V tank in one, and tanks were, like, new back then, and the, and the Germans have some as well, um, like not tanks necessarily, but different vehicles that are, you know, machines of war, or whatever you want to call them, great destructibility too, you blowing up sides of buildings, I was just doing it for kicks, <laughs> everything blows up really nice, but yeah, definitely a really cool game, and like I said, for 7 and change after tax, for new copy, even if I just play the, uh, the single player, single players. It's supposed to be like five, six hours long. I probably put about three, four hours into it already, so definitely cool. And the last one, uh, thank you again to KB uh, for this one. I did the gameplay the other day. Um, Harry Potter, the Lego Harry Potter collection. I just beat one through four. Although now I'm going back and you know doing the replayability to get all the house crests and stuff. And the True Wizards, which I got all of those, because I got a couple of the, uh, you know, the mailboxes you get in these games, the little red, uh, cheat things, and then I got the score times eight, score times two, score times six, so I just, you know, you stack them on top of each other, and you're building up studs, and you're getting True Wizard in, like, five seconds. <laughs> Eventually, I'll play this one, but I want to complete this one completely first. These games were awesome when I first played them, that's why I wanted to play them again, that's why I put this one on my wish list back then. I don't know how much better, better it actually looks. I can't remember the 360 ones from PS3 ones. Um, but it still looks good. Uh, they were not voiced in the, I don't know if they were voiced in this one yet. But they definitely they didn't have their voices. They didn't go to voices in this one. They just used sound bites from the movies. Um, but it's really cool. Like It's usual Lego stuff. You gotta... Different people have different abilities. So some can't dig where you gotta get animals to dig. You know, the Death Eaters will, you know, have the dark magic. Uh, 
someone like Hagrid super strong so he can pull certain things open. Um, like Hermione, 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 Hermione can uh, read certain things like India, like oh, Indiana Jones had this where they would little symbols would come up and she can do that with her book. Uh, it's just really cool too because Hogwarts is awesome to explore, and you also take like you know classes to learn your spells and stuff, which is really cool. That's kind of like the in between because Hogwarts is like the hub, and so is Diagon Alley as well, because that's where you gotta go to get the buy new characters and, and get you know the uh, cheats and whatnot and the hidden levels in Gringotts. There's all the bonus levels, I should say. It's really cool if you're into Harry Potter. It's phenomenal. And that's the thing with Lego games. They're all enjoyable. But if you're into the franchise it's being based off of, it's that much greater. Um, for sure. And it's cool using the spells and stuff. <clears throat> but yeah, after I continue to finish this one up, 100%, maybe not 100%, but do most of it for the time being. I will go to this one. But yeah, I really want to build out this Xbox One collection. I got another game coming that it was like $8.99, and then it dropped to like 6 and change. I'm like, forget it, I'm getting it. Um, I'll show that one when I get it. 